Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm having a quick look at Dali Flow. Is this anything to do with OpenAI Dali? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. But it does have a bit of Dali Mini, now known as Crayon instead. But yes, it tells us in the About section what this is going on about, and it is a human-in-the-loop workflow for creating HD images from text. Ooh, okay, what's going on there? Right, we, oh, we've got a picture. Okay, so text prompt, yeah, goes to Dali Mini, then to Diffusion, and then you upscale it and you're done. Right, okay, I've got it. Okay, now I, of course, I'm gonna be installing absolutely everything locally and running it all on my machine, so I don't have any delays and there's nothing timing out and nothing goes wrong at all because it's all mine and I know exactly what's going on. But you do have some other options for running it as well. For example, here, you've got client usage, there and you can open in collab there you go there's the collab this connects to their server over there the dali flow gina.ai one and there's also a clip as a service server that, that connects to as well so there's a couple of things that could go wrong uh, but yeah there you go if you haven't got uh, your own computer capable of running all the stuff then uh, yeah that's 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 it there that's it there okay right so that's the client but there you go a few a few of the images just so you can see what sort of thing it creates but we are going to be deploying our own server yeah, 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 because that's what we do. Right, as you can see there, there's a whole bunch of things going on. It's got Dali Mini, Glid Diffusion, Swin IR for the upscaling, and Clip as a service. Little server architecture diagram there. And uh, there's, there's a Docker image. If you do like running things in Docker, then okay, fair enough. Uh, you, you've got your Docker image there. Uh, you can Docker pull it, or you can build it yourself. But uh, we are going to be running this natively because yeah that's that's what we do we're nerds yeah all right so before we start any of this we're gonna have a quick look at the prerequisites yeah okay so here we are my setup prerequisites uh i am using ubuntu 2004 and uh, if you want to use ubuntu 2004 as well you can download it there it's completely free you can just install it for nothing brilliant stuff uh, i'm using an nvidia 3090 because you will need at least 24 gig of vram and i have already got the nvidia drivers installed and the nvidia cuda toolkit as well you go over to developer.nvidia.com cuda downloads that is where you can get the cuda toolkit from i have also got anaconda installed because i like creating lots of different virtual python environments for things and keeping them all separate so there you go. Uh, let's, let's start by uh, opening this little thing here, and we will do that. There we go. So I've got my standard terminal there. As you can see, you start off in base, and I want to conda activate Dali flow. There we go. Now I have, of course, already downloaded all this stuff, but uh, if you're starting out from scratch, you'll you'll want to do all this. So uh, yeah, make Dali flow, and so I'm gonna just pop into there because that's where I've got my stuff. Dali flow. There we go. Right. And uh, then you do all the Git clones in there. So we just show you there. Yep. So you got your Dali Flow, your Glid 3XL, Latent Diffusion, Swin IR. Yeah. So you Git clone all of those. Now you also want to download the various uh, Glid 3XL models. So if we have a look at the, uh, the Glid 3XL directory there, you see we've got the various models, BERT, Fine Tune, and the KLF8 as well. You can download those as it shows there with WGET. Or if you if you're like me and you've actually already installed Glid 3XL previously. Um, and uh, yeah, you can just link them like I have. So yeah, I've actually got it in my latent diffusion directory. So no need to download them again because uh, I already did that on a previous video. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now slight difference here. As you can see here, they've got uh, installing the auxiliary repos. It uh, It is slightly slightly smaller and shorter than my thing. Uh, and so there you go. Uh, now, as you've seen before, probably, if you've uh, had a look at Dali Mini, uh, running that locally, this is one of the back ends for this, is Dali Mini. Uh, you will need to install Jax uh, with CUDA support. So there it is, there it is. You'll need the uh, CUDA 11 CU DNN if you're anything like me, and you've got the CUDA Toolkit 11.7 installed with, uh, yeah, all that sort of stuff. So there's, there's a Jax install. Otherwise, it will say, oh, I can't find your GPU and it will fall back to CPU, be a little bit slow. Uh, you'll also need to install PyTorch as well. So there it is, as usual, off the PyTorch website. Pip install Torch, Torch Vision, Torch Audio, and a little URL there, CUDA 11.3. Uh, you'll also need to install Gina and Cython and Dockeray and the Clip server as well. As you can see, it completely neglects to mention a lot of that stuff on there. But yeah, this is, this is all running locally. So uh, yeah, you'll want those few extra things. Now, you can then carry on, as it says in there, you've got the downloads, and then you can do all this normal stuff here. So you're just going into each of those directories that you downloaded. So you install Latent Diffusion, install Glid3XL, uh, and then install the requirements for Dali Flow. 
Uh, now, because we're running the clients locally as well, uh, you will also want to install Jupyter Notebook and IPy widgets again, much like the Dali Mini previous video. Okay, right. So now there's three things that we're that we're sort of doing here: the Clip Server, the Dali backend, uh, and the Dali Flow client. Yeah. Okay. Now, and we need to start all three of those. So yeah. Now basically, I'm going to run all of the, these in different terminal tabs so that I can see the output for each one. Now I've got one open there already, and uh, this is something that they don't quite mention on this repo. It's over in another one, uh, the clip as a server repo. There is a link to it in here, but you have to go over there and have a look to find out all the documentation and see what's going on. But you will have to create a little config file. I know, right? I know, I know. It's okay, it's okay. There it is. So as you can see in here, there it is. Got my CAAS clip as a service YML file. And really the only difference that you need to make from the default config is you need to specify the clip model that you're going to be using. Otherwise, you'll get some MAT1 and MAT2 size errors. And I can't multiply this by this because they're different because the default model is VITB32. So just change the default model to VITL14336PX and you will be funky. Then you can start your clip as a service server using your funky configuration file just like that. And there we go. Funk Python minus M clip service. I've Obviously, you can call your YML file whatever you want, but I've called it CAAS.YML, and there it is. There it is. It's doing its thing, and I've got my endpoint. I now have my endpoint. Fantastic stuff. So let's open up a new tab there. Right. So next, you need to actually start the Gina server. So this is the bit in here. So start the server, Gina flow, flow.yml, and again, actually changing the YML file a little bit. So I'll just start off by uh, activating the Condor environment in my new tab as well and also going into that directory which is where the yml file is so there we go now i've got my new one here local flow.yml so there's, there's a couple of differences in here so uh the first thing is obviously the clip server there is running locally that's the the grpc so that gives you the the uh Naught dot naught dot naught dot naught is is local, so that's that's the local clip server. Um, I've also turned monitoring off because I haven't got Prometheus or Grafana, so I don't need any monitoring data. Don't need it. Don't need it. So there we go. There we go. Those are the only changes. So not a lot going on there, but we can uh, we can now start up that server. So let's copy that in. So Gina Flow uses local. Ding. And there we go. So that goes through. Does all its stuff. Downloads some stuff from Weights and Biases. If you haven't already logged into Weights and Biases, then you may need to do that as well, as it says there. Currently logged in as Nerdy Rodent, because that's me. <laughs> that's me. That's me. Uh, you can also turn the uh, the sync off as well with W and B offline. But yeah, you know, doing a little bit of a sync. So here it is, slowly, slowly, slowly starting up. Da 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 da. It will get there eventually, and then it will give you all the ports and stuff. There's the, uh, the weights and biases thing. It's finally loaded the model. You'll probably recognize that from Dali Mini. And we'll, uh, we'll crack open another tab while we're doing that and uh, start to load up the next thing, which is basically the client. Yeah, yeah, okay. So again, we want to activate our Condor environment because that's got all the stuff installed in it. There we go. And pop back over here. It's it's still doing things. It's still doing things. It will eventually start up the server and uh, it will look very much like that. Yeah. So again, you want to change the endpoint to 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 in, in a minute. Uh, but we will just crack open this Jupyter notebook, which we've got in here. Now that's already got the same directory because that's what opening a new tab in terminal does. Keeps you in the same place. But hey, and then if we just have a quick look in there. Now I've, I've made a copy of the original there. So the original is uh, client uh, .ipymb, yeah, that's that's that one there. But I've I've put a nerdy rodent version in there, yeah, yeah, okay. So that's that's the version I'm going to be starting once I fire up my Jupyter notebook. Okay, and this will take a couple of seconds to start up. There we go, got our browser, does its thing, and. We'll get a little list of files. Da, 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 da. There we go. Okay, so I am opening this one, the Nerdy Rodent one. 
because I've made a couple of changes in this, made a couple of changes. So let's scroll down and have a look at the changes. So as you can see, it no longer has that uh, other address in it. I've now got grpc 0.0.0.0, so I'm running it locally, and I've also done it there as well. Yeah, okay. Now, the other thing I've got is the slightly different prompt as well. So yeah, when you're running it, don't forget to change the prompt. And uh, yeah, this, this is what it does. So there you go. So now I've got a, a portrait painting of a happy badger wearing a silly hat. Okay, excellent stuff. So there, as you can see up in the corner, we've got a zero, a one, a two, and a three. Ah, yeah, this is where the human and the loop bit comes in, isn't it? Okay, so which of those images do you prefer? No, I, I prefer image zero. So when you click play on that cell, it'll give you that one, and then you can change this one. So rather than, you know, doing the whole run all like you would with Dali Mini, you're actually going to click play individually on all of these. And I figured zero was my favorite one there. So that's the one it picked from there. It said zero. Okay, that's the one I'm going to do. And then it does a few variations on that for you. So it's like, oh, okay, you want image zero? I'll, I'll do a few variations. Now you've got another parameter here as well, skip rate and num, num, uh, ugh, <laughs> num images four. So you can change those as well. So if you want it quite variable, you can change it to 0.1. If you want it not very variable, you can change it to 0.9. I like it sort of almost in the middle. So 0.6 is fine. Then you get four versions of it. You got zero, one, two and three and which one of those do I like yeah I quite like number three and then you've got number three so that's number three and then it upscales it yeah yeah okay excellent so let's let's just run through that again shall we let's run through that again so we'll, we'll change our prompt and we'll say okay uh let's have a kitten uh, and a plate of pasta yeah okay right so I'm using my local server. Yeah. I'm checking if anyone's using it at the moment. No, it's just me. It's just me. Fantastic. Okay, great. So I've got my kitten and a plate of pasta. We'll do that. We'll submit it to the server to get the results. Okay. There we go. And uh, let's let's run that and see what we get. This this will take a couple of seconds. So uh, I might just modify time slightly here. Hey, there we go. So we've got kitten and a plate of pasta. Which one do we like the most? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not too sure about that one. Uh, I'm not too sure about that one. I think. I think I'll go with image zero. I think I'll go with image zero. So it happens to be the same. Image zero. That's fine. All right. Let's let's run that one. So we're using that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let's let's generate some more variations on that, shall we? Should we change the? Uh, let's change that down to 0.5 just for a laugh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. A little bit more variety in here and uh, I may just modify time again slightly while I get those different images okay there we go so we've got some slightly different images now I kind of like that one I mean the eyes the eyes look so wrong don't they the eyes look so wrong yeah okay so let's change that to number one because I like number one instead and we'll run that cell so yeah there's the one with the eyes and that's fine we will now upscale that yeah, and this gives us our full 1024 by 1024 size image. Whoa, a massive picture of a kitten and a plate of pasta. Yeah, yeah, and there it is. And there you're done. So then you can you can right click and you can save your image and you're done. Yeah, okay, there you go. So that that's it. Dali Flow, human in the loop, running everything absolutely locally on your own computer. That's it. Rodan out for now.